my rubber base nails need a fill. So let's talk about the difference between rubber base and builder gel and if you can combine the two or not. What's up nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. My nails were in desperate need of a fill. I have just rubber base on both the left and right hands. If you're somebody who absolutely loves the color of rubber base and rubber base adheres really well to your natural nails, but you love how hard builder gel cures and you like how that feels better, you can actually combine the two. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to show everyone how you can do that with a fill. I'm going over my rubber base with a five in one panna carbide bit. It's an extra fine bit and I really like it for when I'm removing rubber base or builder gel because it doesn't like dig way far down into my nails. I can very gently just go over the top of my rubber base, take off a little bit, or my builder gel, take off some of the bulk and then do a fill. This is an extra fine bit and I'm running it at about 20, I think I was running it at about like 20, 25,000 RPM. That's my typical removal speed that I use. Once I got the bulk down, then I went in with a little sanding band. I got these mini sanding bands from Melody Susie that I absolutely love. It came with the drill that I'm using. Um, they're the mini sanding bands, and I want to say the grit is a medium grip. I use that to go around my nails to make sure that the rubber base was roughed up. I go over my natural nail very gently for any of the new growth to make sure that that's roughed up and isn't shiny. Then I like to take a cuticle bit. This one is a McCart one I found. I cannot remember for the life of me where somebody recommended this to me, but I absolutely love it. I will make sure that all these bits are linked in my description. Actually, you know what? I link everything in the description. Sometimes I just forget to say that because I'm so much more focused on the video and helping everybody than worrying about, you know, like saying what products I'm using. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to get better. All right, once you finish with all that, with all the removal and your cuticle prep, you wanna wipe your nails off with some isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free wipe or a paper towel. I like to use a spray bottle for my isopropyl alcohol because I feel like it really helps to get into all the little nooks and crannies so that you can get all the dust off your nails. And then I go in with dehydrator and I do this, all the rest of these steps, one nail at a time. So I dehydrate five nails and I really make sure I get into like every little crevice. You don't want any dust or debris that's getting stuck on your nails because that will keep your rubber base or whatever gel you're using from adhering better. So I do these one hand at a time. I go in with the dehydrator, then I do primer on five nails. And when you're doing primer, it's really hard helps if you etch the primer in. So it's basically what etching means is like scrubbing the primer in. And I do it for two layers because I found that doing two layers of primer helps for adhesion. And now we're gonna get into our rubber base. So I have a really thin layer of rubber base left on my natural nails. And now I'm just going in and doing one thin layer of rubber base so that the color can be at the back of my nails where the nail growth was. I'm not focusing on building my apex or anything because I'm going to do that with the builder gel. And this is how I'm gonna show you how you can combine the two. I do like to take a thin nail art brush and make sure that I get really close to my cuticles with the rubber base without flooding them. That has been a huge help for me because I tend to be a little bit wild when I do my nails. So if I use that thin nail art brush, whether I'm doing rubber base or builder gel, it just helps me to get really, really close to my cuticles without flooding them. I flash cure each nail for five to 10 seconds before moving to the next nail. And I still flip it over for a few seconds just to make sure that the, the rubber base has a chance to self level and go to the right spot on my apex. So even though I'm not like hardcore focusing on it or any really focusing on it at all, it's just out of habit that I flip my nail over and I feel like it just helps everything get to where you want it to be on your nail. You definitely want to cure your thumb separately than your other four nails. So I always flash cure everything and then I'll go through and I cure my thumb for 60 seconds and then I cure my other four nails for 60 seconds. I'm doing the same steps for each nail, just doing a thin layer of rubber base because I want to fill in the back area where I didn't have any of the rubber base on my natural nails so that the color looks consistent through my entire nail. Now, if I was going to do the full fill with rubber base, I would have done the slip layer, which means you don't cure the rubber base, the really thin layer, and then you put a bead of it back towards the back of your cuticle and then float it down towards the tip of your nail. But since I'm doing that with the 
builder gel, we're gonna skip that step and just do a thin layer with the rubber base. I wanted to test this out because some people have told me that they love how hard builder gel cures, but rubber base adheres their nails so well. So if you're wondering what the difference is between rubber base and builder gel, they are both thick viscosity gels that you use as an overlay on your natural nails. Rubber base cures really flexible. So people who have thin bendy nails often like rubber base better, they get better adhesion. For builder gel, builder gel cures hard. So when you try to file builder gel after it's been cured, it literally still feels hard. Rubber base feels a little bit squishier even when it's fully cured because it's more flexible. It's a flexible product. Once I finished applying all the rubber base on all five nails, I made sure that I went through and did the full cure i am like have been kind of psychotic about making sure my nails are fully cured um there's just been so many gel allergies popping up because people aren't using proper lamps i actually got a new lamp you can see it in the video here this one is from light elegance it's one that the nail hub if you've seen her videos she recommended for diyer so i was like okay done sold <laughs> i'm buying this one to know that um, it fully cures my nails now I can go with my builder gel and I did not wipe off any of the tacky layer of the rubber base. I let it stay really tacky. So once t rubber base is fully cured, it still has that tacky adhesion layer or tacky dispersion layer. And I went in with a thin layer of builder gel as my slip layer and did not cure that. And then went in with a bead of builder gel back towards the back of my cuticles and floated it down my nails you know, pulling it into the correct spots and focusing more on building my apex. So you want the majority of your builder gel to be down the middle of your nail. That is going to allow your apex to form. And then you float it down to the sides and down to the tip of your nail and you push it back a little bit towards the cuticles. And that's where I go in with my thin nail art brush and really make sure that I'm getting the builder gel in the right places, that I'm building my apex, that it's getting close to the the sides of my nails without flooding them and if you get a little bit on your skin you want to immediately go in and wipe it off with a nail cleanup brush an angled brush works like really really well for me i have to use alcohol on it i would recommend if you can use pure acetone but my skin had a reaction i want to say it was at this point like a year and a half ago that i had a reaction to acetone so i can't use it anymore and i tried using this non-acetone polish remover that works really well when I'm stamping, but it makes my builder gel and rubber base lift. So I cannot use it when I'm doing the rubber base. I just use um, more alcohol and really make sure that all the gel is off my skin before I do my little flash cure. I, <laughs> I love this little lamp. It actually has really worked nicely to keep it so close. It's not big and bulky. I can just quick stick a finger in there, do a flash cure, and then I do the full cure in there as well. When you're fully curing your nails, you wanna make sure you cure your thumb separately the reason that you do this is because your thumb tends to sit at a like funky angle when you put all five nails into a lamp so i always do my pinky through my pointer together and then i do my thumb separately this way i know that my thumb is getting that full cure because it can sit nice and flat there was one time that i did not know about doing the thumb separately and a couple times I had my thumb not fully cured. So you definitely don't want to do that and leave uncured gel on your nails. The more that you leave uncured gel on your nails, the more likely you are to develop a gel allergy, which we definitely don't want. We do not want to give up our gorgeous gels. I went and I finished my right hand as well. I did that with a different rubber base builder gel combo. The color on my left hand is called As Long As You Love Me. And then on my right hand, I have Wannabe. They're both from OG Dip Powder. And I did the clear over both my left and my right as well so that I could go in and really like file and shape them how I like and get that hardness of builder gel. I typically just go over top of them with a buffing block or like this flexible file that you see here. And then I go around and I fix any shaping that I need to with my hand file. And if any areas of my nail got a little bit too thick and my apex was looking wonky, I go in with my hand file and just do a little bit of extra filing to really like fix up that shape so that my apex is nice right from the start, even with short nails. 
You wanna make sure that you definitely spray your nails with alcohol when you're done and they're ready for whatever you wanna apply on top, dip, nail polish, or gel. Now, if you'd like to learn how to apply dip powder over top of builder gel, make sure you check out this next video. Thanks for joining me today, Nail Crew.